Hello everybody, welcome to judycentral.com online classes for law exam. So today I will be dealing with you on a very important topic about are women returning to dark days in Taliban. It's a comparative study. In this session I will be discussing with you like what are the conditions of women till now um, as the Taliban captures the entire Afghanistan and what actually Taliban thinks about women, how they treat women. So we will be speaking on this issue by the help of slides. So let us see. The present situation. Amid a lightning offensive over the past several days, the Taliban now control more than two-thirds of the country. Just two weeks before the US plans to withdraw its last troops and they closed in on the capital Kabul. So you all have got this information through news channels that Taliban has captured the entire, not entire actually, almost the two-third of the country and also they have captured the major strategic uh, city Kabul which is its capital and this is the image which I have shared with you in this. You can see that the Ta uh, Taliban has actually entered into the presidential office as their president has fled the country. The, a Taliban official has said it would soon announce the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan from the presidential place. So now Taliban will soon announce its Islamic Emirate from the presidential place which it has captured. The UN refugee agency says nearly 250,000 Afghans have fled their homes since the end of May, amid fears, the Taliban would reimpose their strict and ruthless interpretation of Islam, all but eliminating women's rights. 80% of those displaced are women and children. This is very important. According to UN Refugee Agency, it says that uh, till the end of May, more unlike nearly 250,000 Afghans have fled their homes. So in this image you can see like this is the image of just yesterday in which um, like we have witnessed uh, that uh, many are fleeing their this country and all are thronged in the airport trying to catch this plane and it is reported that uh, seven people were killed in catching the uh, aircraft and their main fear is uh, like this uh, Taliban would reimpose their strict and ruthless interpretation of Islam which actually eliminates women's rights and this is important to uh, note that 80% of those displaced are women and children so actually there is a chaos situation which is prevailing in uh, the nation of Afghanistan. Then the conditions of women will understand as the Taliban continue to capture major Afghan cities such as Herat and Kandahar, many women in Afghanistan are concerned about their future under Islamist fundamentalist rule should the group take over the country. So um, women are actually very much worried about their rights especially uh, by the Taliban because they are uh, very they are actually fundamentalist and they are they are having this very strict um, what to say thoughts regarding the rights of women. Today again I feel that if Taliban come to power we will return back to the same dark days says a woman. How was the life during its rule? So now we'll understand Taliban has actually ruled Afghanistan for, uh, for five years and after five years um, America captured the Afghanistan through its airstrikes and through its uh, military uh, during its counter operation on uh, terrorism emerging in 1994 as one of several factions fighting a civil war the Taliban gained control of much of the country by 1996 and imposed its own strict version of Sharia or Islamic law so um, Taliban actually emerged uh, by 1996 and before that the country was under the rule of Soviet and through a civil war, war Taliban gained control much of this country and they have their own uh, version of Sharia Islamic law which is very strict 
especially uh, relating to women women are unable to work or be in contact with men other than blood relatives and had to wear a burqa while out in public so in this image you can see that a woman is actually covering herself from head to toe in a burqa if women violated the rules they could face severe punishments from the taliban such as imprisonment torture or even death women were pub often publicly flogged or executed during the taliban's rule of afghanistan television videos and music were banned men were beaten if they didn't pray five times a day or cut their beards so there were very strict punishments for women uh, in case they violated the rules like uh, torture or even death and uh, like this was in factories that women which who were actually uh, what to say uh, the convict of uh, adultery they are executed in public and also are stoned to death in 2001 the us invaded afghanistan toppled the taliban regime and worked with afghans to establish a democratic government so for establishing the democratic government us played a major role and in 2001 like i have already discussed in another session in which i have already told you like why actually us invaded afghanistan actually to take the revenge of the 9/11 attack by osama bin laden who was under the refuge of taliban after the taliban was driven out women entered public life in afghanistan in robes that includes the field of uh, law medicine and politics women make up more than a quarter of parliamentarians and by 2016 more than 150000 women had been elected to local offices so uh, like um, uh, this days i mean uh, till may uh, may of 2021 women have actually uh, secured their lives as the taliban was driven out of the country by uh, getting into new fields of law medicine and politics which was never happened and also now women make up uh, almost like a quarter of parliamentarians and by 2016 more than 150000 women had been elected to local offices so women also take to uh, i mean to part in the politics of afghanistan live before 1996 in the uh, 1920s queen soraya of afghanistan participated in the political development of her country alongside her husband king amanullah khan an advocate for women's rights soraya introduced a modern education for women one that included sciences history and other subjects alongside traditional home economic style training and religious topics so uh, in the year i mean in the year 1996 taliban captured afghanistan by a civil war from the soviet rule and before that and queen soraya soraya of afghanistan participated in the political development of her country to uh, secure the rights of women and she was the lady who introduced modern education for women that included sciences history and other fields in the 1960s women were among the drafters of afghanistan first comprehensive constitution ratified in 1964 it recognized the equal rights of men and women as citizens and established democratic elections so 1964 has been a significant year for the uh, for the afghan women as they also got the right to participate in the democratic elections alongside their male counterparts and they also uh, drafted the uh, afghanistan first comprehensive constitution which was ratified in 1964 afghan women status continued to improve under soviet backed socialist regimes of the late 1970s and 1980s in this era uh parliament further strengthened girls education and outlawed practices that were harmful to women such as offering them as brides to settle feuds between two tribes or forcing widows to marry the brother of their deceased husband so uh, the women's uh, life under the soviet backed socialist regime were much more secure than what it is now because soviet uh, had done a tremendous job in um, i mean um, for the welfare of the women rights like 
strengthening girls' education and also it outlawed many harmful practices like uh, exchanging of the brides for settling disputes between tribes and also it stopped the brides being um, uh, married to the their deceased husband. Then by the end of the socialist economy in 1992, women were full participants in public life in Afghanistan. In 1996, the rise of the Taliban interrupted this progress temporarily. So by the end of the socialist regime, which was in 1992, because in 1999, Soviet actually uh, falls and uh, it the country, I mean the country changes to the name called Russia and women were full participated in public life in Afghanistan. So during the Soviet backed rule, women had all the rights. But in 1996, the rise of the Taliban interrupted this progress temporarily. The peace talks. Last year, after 20 years in Afghanistan, the U.S. signed an accord with the Taliban agreeing to withdraw American troops if the Taliban severe ties with Al-Qaeda and entered into peace talks with the government. So I have already discussed with you the peace talks in which America entered into an agreement with the Afghanistan to end the 20 years war if it actually, um, I mean, um, gets into their uh, demand cause which they which the us wanted that the taliban shall severe all kinds of ties with al-qaeda and then only us will withdraw its troops from the land of afghanistan officially in this talks taliban leaders emphasize that they wish to grant women's rights according to islam but the women say that they believe the taliban still reject the notion of gender equality so taliban leaders have emphasized that uh, they will ensure the rights of the women according to Islam, but the women are not in terms with what the Taliban actually said. Because uh, uh, according to the women of Afghan Afghanistan, they said that the Taliban is against gender equality. In Taliban run religious schools for girls, students learn the appropriate Islamic role of women according to the Taliban's harsh interpretation of the faith. That consists largely of domestic duties. So Taliban also are religious schools for girls and uh, they are like nothing academic is actually taught to girls except for domestic duties. Who recognizes Taliban and now we'll understand who actually recognizes this uh, group. Only four countries recognized the Taliban when it was last in power, neighboring Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Turkmenistan. So only the four countries, when it was last in power, they supported, they recognized the uh, Taliban. The US and the United Nations imposed sanctions on the Taliban and most countries are unlikely to recognize the group diplomatically. However, some countries such as China have suggested that they may recognize the Taliban as a legitimate regime. So actually, nations are divided uh, over the recognition of Taliban. Some actually recognized it, but the United Nations and US are uh, have imposed sanctions in the past and are actually unlikely uh, to recognize this group diplomatically who are the main players in the taliban so now let us understand haibatullah akun uh, zada appointed the taliban supreme leader after a u.s drone strike killed his predecessor in 2016 haibatullah akun zada is widely believed to have been selected to serve as a spiritual figurehead rather than a military commander. So he is actually a spiritual head, not a military commander. And he was instrumental in unifying the militant group after it fractured during a power struggle following the assassination of his predecessor Akhtar Mansur and the revelation the leadership hit the death of Taliban's founder Mullah Omar for years. So Mullah Umar was actually the original founder of uh, Taliban and he was actually instrumental, you know, hiding the death of the Taliban founder for years and his death was disclosed almost after two years. Abdul Ghani Baradar, so this is the second person, he grew up in Kandahar, the birthplace of the Taliban movement and fought as an insurgent against the Soviet occupation in the late 1970s. He founded the Taliban alongside the one-eyed cleric Mullah Omar in the early 1990s following the Soviet withdrawal. 
The mullah was arrested in Pakistan in 2010 and kept in custody until pressure from the US saw him released in 2018. He now heads the political office of the Taliban and was part of the negotiating team that signed the withdrawal agreement with the Americans. So he is actually, you know, the pioneer of the negotiating uh, team that signed the withdrawal agreement with the Americans. Then Sirajuddin Haqqani, the son of a prominent Mujahideen commander Sirajuddin Haqqani leads the Haqqani network, a US designated terror group that has long been considered one of the most dangerous factions fighting Afghan and US led NATO forces. The group is infamous for its use of suicide bombers and has been accused of assassinating top Afghan officials and holding kidnapped western citizens for ransom. So this person no needs any further uh, I mean uh, explanation to about who he is and he is actually a member of the Taliban group. Then Mullah Yaqub the son of Taliban founder Mullah Omar. Mullah Yaqub oversees the a group's military operation, he has been proposed as overall leader of the movement during its various succession battles. But Yaqub suggested Akhun Zada due to his lack of battlefield experience and age, he is believed to be in his early 30s. So these are the uh, major four members of the Taliban which actually you know runs its operation and are very instrumental in capturing the entire nation. So this is the end of our session and I hope you all have liked it. Do not forget to give a like, share and subscribe to the channel. Till we meet the next time. Thank you and have a nice day.